Hello and welcome to the thermodynamics module. Uh, we're up to lecture number 12 and the topic for today is entropy. We started to look at entropy uh, from the microscopic point of view uh, at the end of the last lecture where we viewed entropy essentially to do with mixing uh, with the uh, energy levels taking the most common uh, com possible configuration and we looked at the situation where we had uh, a temperature gradient uh, and found, well, when you look at the way the molecules have to arrange themselves with a temperature gradient, they are, the structure there, there's order. Uh, ING molecules are at the high end, low energy molecules at the lower end and ordered in between. And we found that uh, nature it, as a proclivity if you like for disorder it tries to mix things up uh, and when we isolated that the system we looked at last week uh, the gradient was essentially annihilated we got a constant temperature uh, complete disorder there was no structure it, it got rid of the structure and that's essentially what's going on with uh, with uh, with entropy but from classical mechanics point of view we want to get to entropy without, in fact, uh, in, invoking microscopic views. Uh, and we, we've gone to look at reversibility. We introduced this idea of reversibility, uh, essentially a fictitious thing. Uh, things have to move very, very slowly to, to achieve it. Um, and um, and it's easily to identify irreversible systems, ones with friction, temperature gradients, this type of thing, we're all uh, irreversible. Uh, well, we want to get to, how do we get to entry then from uh, re uh, reversible systems? And what I want to get to, I'm heading towards this equation. This is what I want to get to. This equation that looks like this. where ds is a small increment, a change in entropy, which is a property. And on the right-hand side, we've got some other things going on. Uh, we can liken this equation to, um, to um, uh, the first law, in fact, where on the left-hand side, we had a property. So for our, for our first law, we have this equation, of course, delta Q minus delta W, this is what we add. Uh, and on the left-hand side, we had a property, a change in property. And on the right-hand side, we had transfers. Um, and this thing is essentially a similar-looking thing. We go on, on the left-hand side, we're going to find we have uh, a change in property, which is our entropy, which we're going to get to. And on the right-hand side, we have uh, a transfer. We only have one transfer, which is this thing, which is called the exchange entropy. Uh, so delta... So exchange entropy, uh, delta E, and we've got to call that, well, that turns out to be delta Q over T. So related to, we've got our delta Q, uh, delta Q over T temperature thermodynamic scale. We now know the thermodynamic scale. Uh, we mentioned it last time. So this is... Um, not a property, don't get, don't mistake this with a property. This on the left hand side is the property, on the right hand side is the transfer of entropy. That's what that is. Uh, and this is by, by, well, essentially supplied by heat transfer. Um, heat, as we mentioned before, work and heat are somehow different. Work is a very ordered form of energy transfer, heat is a disordered. And with disorder uh, is where what entropy is about. Uh, uh, so work is not involved at all uh, as far as uh, increasing entropy is concerned. It's to do with uh, heat transfer. This is the main source of transfer of entropy. And it's given by, sorry, this is, yes, DS. Delta ES. Um, so this is our exchange entropy. Uh, and this term is uh, as a consequence of irreversibility. Uh, this is um, entropy production, let's call it like that, entropy production. Delta IS, and this thing 
uh, is always positive. It's always positive. Um, so this is what we. This is where we're trying to get to. I'm going to try to show that this this equation exists. Uh, and how do we get to it? Uh, we're going to consider uh, uh, a cycle, uh, and, and I'll do it for this. If I apply uh, uh, send, if I go around the cycle of a property, we know. If we go around a cycle of a property, uh, we know that we end up getting zero. This is the thing we get. Any property, we uh, just we, we did it for this one. If this is the property entropy now. I go around a cycle, we end up with a zero. Uh, well, if I integrate this thing here, uh, we get the integral of delta Q over T around a cycle. So we're doing the integrate on the left hand side, integrate on the right hand side, plus uh, the integral around a cycle of delta IS. Um, so that's just just a, a Taking, taking this as red, this equation, we, we haven't reduced it yet, we're just, just looking at the implication of what we get from that. We get on the left hand side, it's a property, the right hand side, there's no properties here. This is, these are transfers and this is production. Uh, this is, a, we saw this mechanism taking place where the gradient, our temperature gradient was becoming a constant. Entropy was being produced, entropy was being increased. Uh, the system was isolated, there was no transfer, it was happening within the system itself. Uh, that's a transfer across the boundary. These are all transfers across the boundary. Heat tra energy transfer, this is entropy transfer. We're, we have this weird term where we've got this production term. It generated itself from within. Uh, and it happened in that example I, I did last time where the gradient was coming constant entry boots being produced there with, from within. Well, what we've, what we've got with this then is this, if I, this is all equal to zero, of course, or we can say this thing, delta Q over T uh, is equal to minus uh, the delta IS. So we get that relationship when we go around a cycle, I'll get my little ring there, uh, that relationship when we go around a cycle. This thing is positive. So when I sum up this, well, this just means the sum of all these tiny increments of production of entropy. So I'm going to minus that sign. So this thing is negative. Yes. So this thing is negative. So this is less than or equal to zero. It could be that you get no production. It's just possible for reversible <laughs> systems where we get no entropy production. Uh, then you get we get we get the equality could apply. Yeah, we'll show that in a second. But essentially, then we get this delta Q over T is less than or equal to zero. This is what we get uh, from this expression. This this expression here. Well, what I've done, I've gone about it uh, back to front, really. Uh, how do we get to these expressions? We start from this. Uh, this is called Clausius, uh, Clausius inequality. So Clausius inequality. Inequality. Where, which basically, which is this, it says that when you go around a cycle, you take a system around a cycle, you will find that when we perform the uh, this integral of uh, heat transfers over the temperature of the substance um, that you're taking around the cycle, so you've got you've got your system, uh, it's applied heat to it, you're noting the temperature of that, and uh, you perform this particular summation of the delta Qs of the heat transfers divided by the temperature, absolute temperature, you will always find that it's less or equal to zero. So this is this is what Clausius said. Clausius said that uh, that uh, this is this is always true for any system you take round round the cycle. Um, so so that was a quite a powerful statement. Uh, and this thing is how we get to entropy uh, classically. Uh, what I've shown here is the I've shown once we have entropy, <laughs> we have this statement then we'll find that the Clausius inequality applies. 
the classical way of learning thermodynamics is to start with this inequality, postulate this equality, you can prove this. The proof is quite tricky. Uh, and I'm only going to give a sort of demonstra a demonstratory proof uh, for a heat engine that uh, that is true. Um, so, uh, but but uh, and then once we've got this, of course, we can um, we can uh, we can we can end up we can arrive at this particular this particular uh, expression, uh, which is our which is uh, introduced the, the property here. So let's let's have a go at that. So so let's have a look at this inequality then. Uh, and let's have a look at a heat engine. So let's go back to our heat engine. Let's have a look at a reversible heat engine. So let's have a look at a reversible heat engine. Uh, why am I looking at that? Well, of course, there is a cyclic process going on in a heat engine. Uh, and this is what we're talking about now is uh, there's a cyclic process. And for our heat engine, remember, uh, we've got um, Q1 being supplied at temp to T1. Um, heat has been rejected, temp to T2, so Q2, and we get work coming out, shaft work, and we're going around. This is a reversible uh, heat engine. So the most efficient heat engine you can have. Uh, gives you the maximum work you can possibly uh, achieve with these engines. Um, and what we've got then, I wanted to do, I want to work out this particular, uh, so what we've got, we've got the material going round here. And of course, remember that uh, what we said about our reversible, uh, our reversible uh, uh, heat engines that to be internal and externally reversible. We had, we require that the temperature of the reservoir and the temperature of the medium, the thermofluids, um, was uh, essentially there was no gradient. There could no, you can only have reversible heat transfers if there's, there's no gradient. Um, so that was uh, that's what we found. Um, so what's happening, of course, is that. Energy has been supplied to the to thermal fluid Q1 at a constant temperature, and it's been rejected uh, from the same fluid uh, at a constant temperature T2. So that's what we've got uh, as the medium, uh, the thermal fluid goes around this cycle. So this 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 thing then, let's have a look at this thing. We've got uh, well, what would it, well, yes, let's have a look. So let's how do we work this out? It's just an integration. Uh, and because we've got constant temperature um, um, uh, uh, the when the heat is being supplied is at a constant temperature uh, the temperature it turns it turns out to be fairly easy to work it out so let's have a look at it it's the so delta Q over T around a cycle for this for our for our reversible heat engine so heat is being supplied here at Q1 constant temperature T1. so I get I get plus uh, to our system, remember, heat going into the system is positive, isn't it? So we get that Q1, um, uh, we get Q1 uh, over T. And on the other side of the thing, uh, we've got heat leaving the heat leaving the thermal fluid. Um, so we get negative Q2 over T um, is, is, the, uh, is what we get when we evaluate um uh, the reversible heat engine there so that's what we've got uh, what can we say about this well sorry over t2 well we know do we not that for a uh, we um for we know that for our engine here we know that q1 over q2 uh, for r if we're at r on it um, well, let's write it this way. Q2 over Q1 is equal to T2 over T1. That's what we, that's what we know. Um, and so we can see here that uh, I can bring the Q, I can bring the Q to there, so we can rewrite that. 
that implies that, uh, and the tube T2 comes down, so Q2 over T2 is equal to Q1 over T1. We can deduce that. Um, probably should put an R on all these things. Uh, but in any event, you can probably see what's going to happen. That is equal to that, so this thing is zero, equal to zero. Uh, what I've shown here is this result. Uh, let's put an R on it. Delta QR over T is equal to zero. So this is the limiting case, the limiting case um, for... Clausius inequality, so it just show that Clausius inequality works in a sense. It's not really, a, it's not a formal proof. As I said, they proved this. Uh, it's in single and balls and boot. You can follow, have a look at it as well. It's, once you've seen it, it's, it's something you forget quite readily. Uh, and it's much easier to get to it once you have this. You can see how easy it is to show it once you've got this. Once you accept this, then sure, that is trivial, yes. Uh, it's the, going from there to there is a bit more tricky, uh, as it turns out. But what we have shown, we've shown the equals one. We've shown the equals one. The equal one will happen when um, when you have no production, when this is equal to zero, and and the exchange entropy is applied reversibly. Um, so what we found, so let's just sum up what we found. Here we found that... Um, uh, this is a situation uh, which this applies to, but we have to put an R on that. We'll get to that in a second, but uh, set where the heat has been supplied reversibly. Everything's been supplied reversibly here. This is what I've shown. Heat transfer to the medium has been uh, supplied reversibly. Well, uh, so that's okay for reversible. Um, we can we can see that this inequality, Clausius inequality, is working in the limit. We find it zero there. Uh, what happens when we've got an irreversible uh, engine? Let's have a look at an irreversible engine. Um, and uh, uh, to see that uh, which is less than obviously this is zero, so it could be greater than uh, the possibility. Uh, so what do we know about irreversible? Irreversible. Heat engine. So, so an irreversible heat engine. Well, we found by Carnot's principle that the reversible ones uh, are the much more efficient, of course. So we could look at the efficiency. Yes. So we know that the. Um, we, we, you may recall that the efficiency, the thermal efficiency of a, of a heat engine uh, turned out to be 1 minus Q2 over Q1. This is what it turned out to be, didn't it? Um, this thing, of course, is less than or equal to the thermal efficiency. Uh, so this is irreversible. A little eye on that. This thing is, turns out to be less than or equal to that for a reversible one. This is what Camus principle said to us. So this is uh, eta thermal reversible. And we found that that was one minus T2 over T1. This is what we found, yes. Uh, so we've got this thing. So let's, write, let's get rid of the eters and say, well, look, what we've got then is one minus Q2 over Q1 is less than equal uh, 1 minus T2 over T1. So we have that. Uh, we have that relationship. Uh, well, you can take the ones from each side, can't you? You can take the ones from each side. Um, that's for sure. Um, so let's, let's do that. So we get minus Q2 over Q1 is less than equal to minus T2 over T1. And what I want, of course, I want to, I want ratios. I want the ratios of Q. So I want to I want to bring the Q down and I want to bring the Q I want to bring the T down and I want to bring the Q up. And that that's that's problem. So I've got uh, one minus Q2 
or that T2 uh, is less than or equal to minus Q1 uh, over uh, T1, yeah. So we've got that. Uh, the next thing I want to do, I want to take this, I've not changed, I've not multiplied through, you have to watch for inequalities, you multiply it through by a minus sign, and it will switch things. Uh, I've not done that, the numbers are all positive that I, I exchanged there. I'm going to take this to the other side. So I'm going to have Q1 over T1 uh, minus Q2 over T2 is less than or equal to zero. Yes. Uh, so that's what we found by looking at this. Alternatively, uh, but not this. I'm cheating a little bit here, but um, but uh, it's indicative. I, I think uh, we're going to add that this thing for our engine is delta Q. I put an I on it. Well, it's any. It's not. That's that's T. Uh, is less than equal to zero. So it's very inverse, but I could put an I in it, I suppose, but uh, it's any, any, it applies to any transfer. Uh, so this is just, uh, just to slightly showing you that uh, that this thing is kind of applying. I have cheated, uh, I've cheated a little bit, so you might, might know where I've cheated. Uh, uh, well, I've cheated because the, um, the temperature uh, that I'm talking about uh, when we take the system around the cycle is the temperature of the medium, temperature of the thermal fluid, of course. And of course, if these temperatures are in fact the temperatures um, um, of the of the uh, of the reservoirs. Um, now, if it turned out for the for this one, everything was great. I, I didn't cheat really. Uh, we we accepted that in fact they were the same when the heat transfer was taking place. The temperatures of the medium and the temperature of the reservoir were identical. Um, and uh, uh, but here when I, when when we look at a, uh, a reversible heat engine, uh, the less efficient. The there's definitely gradients generally. Yes, definitely gradients between the. Uh, uh, or, or, well, it could be possible, I suppose, that it was internally irreversible. Uh, and externally reversible, then it would then this would be correct. Uh, but generally, that, that would be unlikely. Um, so I did cheat. This 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 bit of analysis I've done is is just indicative. It's not it's not a formal proof of this inequality. As I said, if you want to you want to look at that, it's entirely up to you. You can read about it. I'm just asking you to accept it. Um, and as I say, in a sense, it's. Uh, slightly obscure way to try to get to entropy, uh, which has a physical manifestation at the micro microscopic level. Um, and this is trying to do a macroscopic version to get to it. Um, anyways, to get to entropy, how do I get to entropy? It's actually this integral, which I've just shown. This is the one that we, we're we going to use to show that we've got a property. Um, uh, the inequality just gives us the, uh, well, we've got rid of the, the production term. Uh, we can deduce the production term being positive from the inequality, uh, but we reduce the property by from this particular one where we take a system around a cycle. So let's do that. We want to, we've actually kind of met this already in the sense uh, when we did the first law, we said, okay, we went around a cycle and we had something that went to zero, yes? Uh, and from that, we deduced it was a property, didn't we? This is what we did. And, um, and this is exactly the same. There's no, I'm going to do exactly the same argument here. Uh, I've got an integral that goes round a cycle. It goes to zero. Uh, it must be a property, yes. This is the, this is the argument. Uh, so this is how we get to it. This is how reversibility gets to, gets to the property uh, of entropy in a macroscopic way. Um, uh, as I said, this is quite a tricky thing to prove. Uh, uh, the way the way you do it, so it's in it's in it's in single balls. You've got to produce heat engines all the way around the, the, the process. As it goes around a cycle, you supply the energy using heat engines. Uh, you form this, you form a summation, and you get this particular thing. But you know, uh, it's 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 of no practical value in a sense. It's not going to you know you're not going to let you solve problems. Uh, once you accept entropy, you'll just forget about it. So I don't see much point 
and trying to come doing a formal proof for you uh, and spending probably two two lectures and then you probably wouldn't understand it and uh, and you forget about it straight away. So I don't think there's as much ga gained in that. I've given indication we've shown it's equal to zero in the limit when we've got a reversible process. That is certainly true. Uh, we took a we took a pro round of cycle supplied energy here. Uh, reversibly supplied and you get this equality here uh, and in a normal okay this is just indicative it's a bit naughty of me uh, but I, I, I uh, rearranged it it does look like uh, it does look like this but the T here unfortunately is the wrong T <laughs> it's meant to be the temperature of the medium and it's the temperature of the the, the, uh, the reservoir so that was a bit naughty uh, but Hopefully, I've kind of convinced you at least that the uh, this thing does apply. Okay, so what, what do I want to do now? Well, what I want to do now, I want to apply this this uh, equality to show that we do indeed have a property. So we take a system, we imagine our system, we apply an energy to it, it work, whatever we want to do. We take it round a cycle. Uh, and we have this particular thing. So what, what do we do? Uh, so, so the property, property, entropy. So the property entropy. So let's have a look then. So what we're imagining, we're going, we're going to have our properties X and Y, or Y and X. Uh, and we're going around the cycle. Um, we take the thing around the cycle and we're doing it reversibly. Uh, we go on around the cycle um, and we're going to do it uh, reversibly. So we're going to go from uh, we're going to go from uh, one to two. We're going to go from path uh, A. Yeah, and then we're going to come back again uh, from path B. And then we're going to take another path, possibly as well, from path C. So we take, what we imagine here is that we've got our system of mass. Uh, we're slowly taking it uh, we're, we're quasi-statically. We're taking it around the cycle. Everything's defined. All the properties are defined. Uh, and we go on, we go on uh, from one to two, um, and uh, uh, state point one, state point two, and we're coming back in uh, two, two, two different ways. Uh, so what do we do? So we've got this, uh, this integral applies uh, when we do that. Um, so. Um, so we've got that delta Q of R uh, around the cycle over um, over T, uh, and we so we're summing this up. And what do we mean by that? Then we're going from uh, let's go from one to two path A. Let's do that. So we're going to write this as one A two. Let's do that, shall we? Delta Q. Uh, R over T, and we're going to go from um, we we'll go from B, yeah. So let's go from two B back to one delta Q R over T. We're doing that. Also, let's do it then for the other. Let's go. Let's go again from. Uh, delta Q R over T, and in this case, let's go from again up one A two, but also we'll come back the other way. Yeah, shall we go that do that? So one A two Delta Q R over T plus um, Delta Q R over T, and we're going from two uh, T. 
These things are the same, of course. This thing has to. Uh, uh, this these things add up to zero, of course, as we know. Um, and consequently, we uh, we invariably we deduce that um, that it must be the case that uh, as as well we can deduce a few things. But it must be the case that uh, that um, that this thing and this thing must be the same. Yes. Yes, they must be the same. Uh, um, if I subtract them, um, we can see that these things vanish. Um, uh, these things vanish, obviously, it's equal to zero. So we end up that this thing, the integral from uh, 2 B1 delta Q R over T is equal to the integral, uh, sorry, don't, don't circle on that. <laughs> we end up at the integral of uh, 2c1 is delta qr over t. So we end up with that, which tells us what we already kind of knew, I think, from our last time we did this, that the... Uh, that it doesn't matter what that what what delta q delta q r over t is whatever it is, it's independent of the path. So when I go from two to one here, it doesn't matter if I go from b take path b or c. It makes no difference to it uh, as far as that's concerned. We know that delta q um, uh, is not a property, and if you take different paths, it'll do different things. Um, but uh, the delta qr over t, it will appear, uh, changes things. Uh, and what we can deduce, therefore, that uh, delta qr over t is a property, and we're going to call it ds, then, uh, delta qr over t. Uh, so we're introducing the property entropy. Uh, and the units of kilojoules per, ki per k. So entropy as units, we're using kilojoules per, per unit temperature, Kelvin. Uh, so we can deduce that, and, the, and you see it, of course. I mean, if I call ds, uh, if, I've got a, if I've got this, uh, and it comes directly from this. I mean, I've gone through this slightly elaborate thing to show it. Uh, but of course, you know, if you go, you take a property, any property around a cycle, yes, then it's zero, yes? And that's exactly what this is. So it comes immediately because you've taken this rank around a cycle. All I'm showing here, a bit more form, so we'll look, it's path dependent. It's the independent of the paths. Uh, equivalently, so you take uh, uh, this thing that uh, goes to zero for all, all, all cycles, then it's clearly uh, independent of the path. That's where it's coming from. So we deduce that uh, we've got this property entropy. Uh, so that's how we do it. This is how we do it classically. We just, uh, we do it classically this way, um, where we don't look at the microstructure. We introduce, we're introducing this thing about reference to the microstructure, and it's a bit obscure. It's it's all it's this is the problem with it. it doesn't really tell you much about it, uh, and also it's slightly more obscure because uh, this is reversibly the heat has been reversibly applied here. Uh, but as we mentioned, we have the Clausius inequality. We have the Clausius inequality, uh, and we can deduce deduce further because so this is the the zero version of it. Uh, but uh, we know that um, Clausius inequality says this. It says that you know delta Q over T is less equal to zero. It's got this is the inequality. Uh, what we find in uh, okay when the Q, delta Q uh, is R reversibly applied, so it means very very slowly. Well, temperature. Invariably, that because temperature gradients are non existent, that's how you supply it. You know, there are tiny differences in the temperatures with the heat flown in. Uh, then we have the equality. This is the this is what we're saying. So, delta QR 
or the t is equal to zero. So we've got that, of course, and this is the one I've used then to say, well, this actually is a property. Uh, but I mentioned last time, uh, I started off by saying, well, actually, the formula I'm after, uh, I mean, okay, delta QR is there. We, well, I'll do an odd example, I think, just to show it. So one example, um, which is in the notes anyway, but I'll do it anyway, uh, just to show how we can use this formula. We tend not to use it, to be honest, <laughs> uh, because it's, you know, it's... Uh, you have to con con contrive uh, mechanisms by 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 which you put the energy into a system that, to make it reversible. So it's um, conceptually it's a tricky thing to apply. Uh, and since we know that entropy is a property, this is what this is. So entropy is a property. That's what we're that's what we we we've been told here. I've got a property because I integrate on the cycle. Uh, we get a zero, it's a property, and therefore it's tabulated and we can work it out. It's, uh, you can use other sort of properties to get to it. Uh, entropy, um, uh, like energy, it's not something that's measurable. Uh, so usually, therefore, to, to get to it, we'd use properties which are measurable. Um, and we wouldn't tend to use this particular formula, uh, but, but it's gives it. It is a formula. Um, but I've already showed, haven't you, that well, actually, we can write this in a slightly more general way, and this is this. This is slightly more modern, is the delta Q, uh, delta Q over T, so not R, plus delta I S, uh, where this thing is positive, and we can juice it because of this, actually, we get it from this. Uh, we can uh, essentially because um, this is if we integrate both if we integrate now we've got this as a property now this is this we know what this is it's this it's this one then um, if I integrate that around a cycle of course uh, that's equal to zero yeah uh, well this thing's delta i by the way we say that's always positive that's what we're arguing. Uh, that must be the case because why? Because of this inequality. Because when I integrate this round a cycle, I integrate this round a cycle, delta Q over T, uh, and I've already done this, but let's do it again. Delta I S. This is positive, yes. Uh, this is equal to zero. Consequently, this is less than zero, yes. Uh, this has, this equality applies. It's less than zero. It's negative. But that's positive, that has to be negative for this to be zero, yes? So that is the, that is the, so this, this formulation then captures the rest. And when this is equal to zero, we have the, we have the limit that delta Q is, delta Q is, 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 is um, reversibly applied. So, and that's what it means. If there's no entropy production, then it's reversible, it's reversibly applied. So, so what we have then, so uh, so when delta i s is a delta q zero, so the equality, then uh, delta q is equal to delta q r, so the reversible, uh, and then we get in that case d s is equal to delta q r over t, which is exactly what we're saying. This is what we're saying. Uh, ds is equal to delta qr over t. Uh, so this is a slightly nicer way to think about entropy. Uh, but the way, but you have to bear in mind, do be careful, uh, this equation, you have to liken it to uh, the equation we already know for energy on the left-hand side is the property on the right-hand side. These are not properties. Uh, this is entropy transfer. It's a transfer of energy, like work, like heat, is a transfer of, uh, sorry, entropy, it's a transfer of energy. Uh, this thing is a transfer of entropy. Uh, this thing is unusual in, in it's, we don't have it in the first law. It's a reduction term, it's, it's a consequence of the uh, system producing uh, entropy. Um, and we see what, why it does that. It's, it's, it's trying to kill off gradients, that's, that's what's going on there, uh, in, in a sense. 
So entropy is, we've got to entropy, we've got to it now. It's in kilojoules per k, it is a property. Uh, it's related to uh, this rather slow process. Again, uh, when uh, if you want to relate it to reversible processes, um, but at the same time, we can also forget about that because it turns out it's a property, so I can I can get to it by my <laughs> by other properties, and we'll see how, how we do that. Um, so we do the time. We're, okay, we've got ten minutes. Okay, so let's do let's do let's do a problem. I think this is in the notes. Uh, uh, let's let's just have a look at uh, a simple problem where I use this formula, uh, which. <coughs> Let's have a look at uh, just a simple example uh, of entropy. How do we work out? And this is this is in the notes. Uh, so an example. So well, we've got ds is equal to delta q r over t, or we can have little ds specific value where we do delta qr over t. So we divide through by the mass of our system. So we've got a closed system. Now what we're thinking of then is uh, a problem. We've got a piston and we've got a substance in here uh, and we've got uh, uh, what I would call this. I've got this uh, so this is P, P1 is equal to two bar. Okay, let me let me let me try and draw that again, shall we? <laughs> Keep it simple. Okay, we've got what we've got to do then. We've got a uh, we've got a piston. P1 two bar T1 equals two seven three. Kelvin. Okay, so that's just above. Um, well, that's a freezing, isn't it? <laughs> uh, and then so that's our state one. Then we've got another one. And we're going to heat this thing up, light energy to it. Uh, and we're going to go to another state. Uh, that's T, uh, P1 again, P2 equals 2 bar. And T2 equals um, 393. So that's the boiling point, essentially, a 2 bar. It's around about 120 degrees C. So 393 um, is, the, is what we've got there. And then we're going to do a bit more heat, apply more heat into this thing. Uh, and now, in this case, the piston doesn't rise, we're saying. This, so this is liquid. Um, it's, of course, it's, well, it could be ice there, couldn't it? But let's <laughs> uh, just say it's, 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 it's the interface. So, um, uh, anyways, it, the, the density doesn't change much. So as you heat this thing up, energy has been supplied to this thing. Uh, Q has been supplied, and it's heating it up. But in the first instance, uh, the piston doesn't rise. And then the piston does rise. So what we've got uh, on the next stage, we've got uh, P3, and it's equal to 2 bar. So this is just the dead weight of the thing. Uh, and uh, uh, and T3, we're going to have it as 393. Okay, I need to tell it, yeah, okay. Now this is saturated water, let's say that. Saturated water. And this is saturated, saturated vapor. So what we're doing is, um, what we mean by saturated, we had the, remember the saturated liquid line, we mentioned that, saturated, it's saturated with energy, that's what saturation means. So it's liquid and you're, you're eating it up, you're putting energy into the system, uh, and there comes a point where that the liquid can hold its form, and of course then it, it, vapour comes out, so come out of that. Uh, so that's the saturated water, 
So that's the taking it to the uh, to the point, to its boiling point. And of course, what happens then? You still put energy in. Uh, you still put energy into this thing uh, until you reach this this state, uh, where all the all the water has turned to vapor. Yes, so that's saturated. That's a saturated vapor. So this is dryness fraction equal to zero. Dryness fraction equal to one. That's where we are. Uh, and what I'm going to do, what I want to do here is work out the uh, work out the uh, the entropy change as we as we move from state one, state two to state three. This is what I want to do, uh, and we're going to use this formula uh, to actually do it. So this is just you know you can read this from the tables, of course, <laughs> as it turns out. So you don't really have to use this formula, but you might as well use it to see what happens. Uh, so what have we got? Um, so first thing, let's have a look at the uh, let's have a look at the first law. Yes. So delta Q, uh, so du is equal to delta Q uh, minus delta W. Okay. Um, this system, as there is work, so I've not done my system. That's very naughty of me. So this system is um, of, of the wherever the substance is, solid or liquid, liquid. Yeah. Saturated vapor here. So X, X, we know that X3 equals, well, X3 equals one here, and X2 equals zero there. The dynamic fraction. So that's the, uh, these are not independent, you notice, so uh, uh, as we see, so we needed another property, and we've got it. <laughs> it's a dryness fraction. We've got this, in this case, uh, let's just sort this out. This is equal to delta Q uh, minus PDV. This is displacement work, isn't it? We've got displacement work going on. The system's expanding um, or not. Um, and we have this thing. Uh, and we've done this operation before, but what we can do, of course, is take this to the other side. Pressure's constant throughout this thing so what we can do is uh, write this as d of u plus pv uh, which is equal to dh of course which is equal to d delta q so there's the there's the simplification uh, as far as as far as the um uh, as far as the as far as the energy's uh, concerned so the change in enthalpy is equal to the heat supplied. So that's the first law uh, uh, dealt with there. Uh, so let's have a look at this this thing. Uh, the question is, we're applying heat here. I'm not saying it's reversible. Uh, and the, the question is, how do you apply heat reversibly to this thing? Uh, because the only formula I've got is this one. This is what we're saying. We want to use this formula. Uh, but the delta Q here is not the same for delta Q there. Yes, it's... Um, um, you know, the, the, um, this is a, an increment. Uh, we're not worried about the, uh, we're not worried, you know, if you do it very slowly. Um, uh, and so we somehow we have to get, somehow we need to get uh, to a situation where we can get, we, apply, we can eat this thing reversibly. And this is, this is the difficulty with it. This is the contrivance you have to come up with. And the way to do it actually is to set the system up like this. You imagine it. Uh, as a temperature um, T and you've got a, a slightly higher temperature an infinitesimally higher T um, and you've got uh, energy uh, delta QR in this case uh, sorry ah. uh, so this is the situation is how you imagine um, uh, dealing with the uh, the problem with how can I apply this formula? You have to contrive a way to uh, to uh, to arrive at um, to arrive at um, yeah to arrive at that. Sorry. Okay, so let's have. Uh, so what do we do? We've got. Um, 
So we've got uh, um, we've got this situation, um, and uh, what we're going to do then is, is uh, for the water, is just have the. Uh, um, well, we know that d delta Q. Uh, well, well, we're applying this since we've got delta, we get we're applying the the uh, the the heat reversibly. Uh, we've got. Um, We've got in this equation, of course, that delta Q. Uh, well, delta we've got delta H. We know is equal to C delta T. Yeah? C is uh, uh, four point two kilojoules per kilogram K. That's for water. So that's what I'm using anyway. Uh, we've got that. Uh, and we've got this is equal to delta QR now. We can set this since we, we apply it. We're, what we're trying to do now is set up the situation of this, uh, and we've got this is equal to T uh, TDS. Yes, um, I can rearrange this equation to find that DS then is equal to C dT over T. Yeah. Um, and consequently, as I go from one to two, I can integrate it. So let's do that. Integrating both sides um, uh, from one to two, let's put it like that then. ds, that's s2 minus s1. That's equal to that. And that's equal to one to two. Uh, c is constant, dt over t. Yeah, and that's equal to the natural log, yeah. So C natural log of T2 over T1. So that's equal to that. Um, I'm just checking on the time. We're starting to run out of time now. Um, and put the numbers in. I've got the temperature. T2 is 393. T1 is 273. So this is 4.2 times the natural log of... Um, uh, 393 over uh, 273. And I've worked this out somewhere else, I'm sure. Uh, 1.53, 1.53 kilojoules per kilogram K. Now it turns out, if you look at the steam tables, <laughs> at, at, at 2 bar, at the saturation, so we look at FF, SF, this is the saturation value, sort of at uh, 2 bar. Uh, lo and behold, it gives it exactly the same value, 1.53. And I say, because uh, entropy because entropy is a property, you can relate it to the property, so we know, we have it tabulated. Now, I'm just showing how it's worked out, though. This is just showing out how it worked out using this formula here. Um, and we see you, the problem with it, you have to imagine a way to put the heat in reversibly so, so they can use the formula because you have to have a delta QR there. Uh, and generally, the uh, generally, um, the heat transfer, um, not under normal circumstances, would be reversible, yes, so they don't match, but you can get them to match if you can contrive it to be so. Um, uh, so that's the way you have to think about these things uh, in that case. Okay, I'm slightly running out of time. I'm going to let you, it's in the notes, the rest of the problem. You can go from here to here. It's slightly easy to go from there to there, actually, because the temperature's constant. So um, it's not a big deal. Uh, you don't use the C one in that case. Um, you have to, uh, well, for, so, that, so that's, well, anyway, that's from one to two. So from three to, three to, what I just started off. From two to three, uh, in this case, you, everything is holding up um, uh, in that case. Uh, but what we get is, um, you don't have this term here. Uh, you have ds. ds is equal to dh over t. Uh, but, of course, temperature doesn't change. So this is, this is fairly easy. We find that s, s. Uh, 3 minus S2, which is actually equal to SFG, in fact, is equal to um, exactly the same thing, H3 minus H2. 
to or the saturation temperature TS, we're calling that now with 393, and that's equal to HFG over T, the saturation temperature. So that's how you get. So SFG is equal to HFG. This is H is the latent heat, of course. HFG is the latent heat. Vaporization, uh, and these are in the tables. So, you, well, but you can check both of them out. This 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 difference is in the tables. Uh, temperature, the saturation temperature. So that's how you do it for the for the for the final case. So it's quite straightforward. So, well, I'm not generally not going to be applying this form. I've got to admit. So, um, my the view of it is that we tend to just use there's other formulas. We'll see. There's other ways that because we know that S is a property. It's slightly easier to relate it to other properties. It just turns out to be that much easier to do it that way. Uh, but I'm just showing you how you can get use this slightly artificial way of, uh, of uh, uh, um, with this reversible idea. Of, you can actually use it to, to work out. You can actually do it, but you have to contrive ways of putting the heat in reversibly to do that. Okay, we'll continue this next time. We'll start to look at the more general form there and also look at uh, rate forms um, and we liken the, um, the we'll, get, we'll get the transport equation for entropy uh, we have one for we have one for uh, energy of course uh, there's also one for entropy and we'll, we'll again apply that to our uh, our idiomatic machines and that'll be next time okay thank you bye bye